confirm and go live welcome everybody to another Thursday here on my live stream international master William Pascal aka sparkle horse aka slaggy on twitch you see we are in Ponda God mode the original Ponda is not here his friends are here hello so we're big fans big fans of the Ponda <clears throat> But anyway, it's time to do our subscriber stream, guys, which means every Thursday we have a special session where for two and a half hours here we go over subscriber games or games, you know, suggested by the subscribers, and we do some serious analysis. Rather than play Blitz and Rapid Chess, which we tend to do, we are going to concentrate on analysis. I'd like to welcome everyone to the stream. Hopefully my audio is actually turned on today. I have been messing with my printer, trying to get it work to work for like two days. Get it work, get it to work for like two days, and um, in the in the process of trying to get my printer to work for two days, I just kept unplugging stuff and plugging stuff in, and and finally I got my printer to work, so that's cool. But um, we also remember to plug in the mic, which is a good thing. So just a quick rundown of who's in the house here. We've got Astrobate, Mr. Coffee, and JCS, just to name a few. I think Nefidov's around. Spectacular Camel. You have this annoying thing where you can't type on my other machine. Like, because you spilled coffee on your machine? Nils. Uh-oh. Nils, yeah, you're in the list. You're pretty early in the list, man. Thank you for the subscription. Um, sorry, for the donation. I'm a little out of it. I was doing other stuff today. My mom is in the rehabilitation center so I go to visit her every day I'm like in that mode um, hopefully she's gonna come home in like two weeks which will be cool so I get to get my mom back and um, that's always nice it's been it's been kinda stressful worrying if they'll let her out of jail <laughs> but basically she's gonna be allowed to come home um, alright so we've got an exception today I wanna thank Nils and Merle Dixon for their donations by the way 200 bits from Nils 200 bits from Merle Dixon Fish Rat Cow is not on the list yet. We've got a, a list already in place. I don't have any games, but what do I have that I'd like to look at? Is a Lee Chess Puddle like a Puddle? I can't even talk. A Lee Chess Puddle. A Lee Chess Puzzle I couldn't solve. If you can do that in lieu of a game to analyze. Okay, Fish Rat Cow, if you can format to put that game in there, because um, I can't, like, you know, bring the puzzle up. If you can create the puzzle or reconstruct the puzzle if you don't mind creating a study where you can reconstruct it absolutely that's totally cool we have um you can't type on firefox that's weird um we have a special request from one of our long-term subscribers which i normally wouldn't grant cheers mubot but um and cheers astrobate he said cheers Earl dixon so cheers nils i hope you're drinking as well um, the the special request I'm going to grant is is because of Nefidov he doesn't have a game to analyze and he wants me to play a rapid game with him in lieu of analyzing one of his games and I wouldn't normally grant this even though he is a subscriber because that's not the theme of the day but the fact is that I was supposed to go with Nefidov to a tournament um, this weekend and couldn't go because my mom was sick so I have to, um, I had to bail on that, you know, he's known about that for over a month, but, um, basically, I feel, you know, kind of like I owe it to him, plus, he's got this tournament he's going to play in, so he needs the training, so I'm going to grant this exception to Nefidov, not to anybody else, because I want to keep this a subscriber session, um, but I am going to play this one game with Nefidov, so if he's ready, I'm going to play this one game, no other, um, no other, uh, Nils, I had a funny story about that. Before we start the game, when I was in college, university uh, in Boston, I went to the, like <laughs> the health uh, health services, and they diagnosed me as having um, what is it called um, mononucleosis, which is like a really strong, really strong virus that's supposed to like totally knock you out for months. Sometimes they diagnosed me as having mononucleosis, and the next, not even the next day, like that night. Um, some of my friends got me to go to this bar 
And basically, we, we, we bought, like, I don't know, $500 worth of drinks between, like, five people or something. And I don't know, because my friend was one of the bartenders, and he was kind of giving us a break on it or something. But we drank so much that night that I got better. <laughs> I think the alcohol actually killed mononucleosis in my body. And within a couple of days, I was, like, completely, completely cured. So I'm not sure. I'm not recommending trying it at home, but all right. So let's go to our challenge with Nefidov here. Nefidov casual seven plus three. Um, all right, we're gonna take the challenge here. One exceptional game, exception for a game. Um, all right, so what can we test Nefidov? Best test Nefidov. It's I think his Italian game is shaky, you know. So we're gonna go for his weakness. Um, if he really wants to be tested. But I don't think, you know, I don't think it's impossible that the large amounts of alcohol, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? That's the saying. That's what a lot of people go by. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So maybe it actually worked. You got to go to uni to, oh, okay, so you're, you've even got a study. Oh, man, that's rough. Who studies at uni? Okay, e4, e5. I'm playing bishop c4. I guess I could have played knight f3, but he usually transposes anyway. But this time... Wait, didn't he play knight c6 last time? I have a bad feeling about this. I should have played knight f3 and forced him to play knight c6 and then play bishop c4. So now he's mixed it up on me. Last time he played knight c6. So maybe he's got something else in mind here. Yeah, well, I mean, it's possible that the alcohol could literally, I guess, kill the, the virus. I don't know. That's why I'm not a doctor. There was a story in the BBC about a woman who was, uh, I don't think she's originally, like, from the UK, but she was working in the UK for, like, 20 years as, like, a clinical psychologist or something. And it turned out, like, she never, <laughs> she never had like received a medical degree it only took like 19 or 20 years to catch her for pretending to be <laughs> like a licensed psychologist all right so d5 right away well this will transpose to some kind of italian game basically okay infinite flash chess will will i really like the game i sent in today when did you send in a game just now yeah he just sent in a game um all right That'll probably be about the most games we can do. We've got like 10 games plus Nefidov. All right, Nefidov, you're playing d5 there. That's considered very risky to play like this. Was it Nietzsche? It always funny. I always think of like in Russian to offer a draw is Nietzsche. Nietzsche. I don't know. Nefidov will like kill me for this. I probably mispronounced it really bad. But. Yeah, the famous philosopher. <clears throat> All right. You really like the game you sent. Some people send the game their favorite games. I think it's better to to analyze your losses. All right. We're gonna just play this one game. Um, this is just for Nefidov to warm up for his tournament this weekend. Oh, well, I'm not a sub. Ignore me. <clears throat> well, if we get time, um, you're at the back of the, you're at the back of the bus. Anyway, you would have been at the back of the bus, Infinite. So if we do get time. In Germany, there was a nurse that killed her. Oh, I heard about that. So medical degree doesn't have any. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that was some years ago, right? What is, what is this? Some sort of weird gambit. Wow. Okay. Knight b6. It's not. It's not a gambit. Um, I have seen something like this. Actually, move eleven. We'll have to consult him. Because he was trying to play something like this. Where is move eleven? He he must be playing tonight at the Marshall Chess Club. Um, he was trying to play something like this, but I have a suspicion that this isn't quite right for black. Position. I have a position. I tell you guys, when I'm tired, I start to be dyslexic. And I looked it up, I said on the stream last week, 
The internet claims you cannot develop dyslexia later in life, but I never had it at all, like until, until lately. I will send games where I play like a blind amoeba. Well, interesting struggles would be recommended. He's called Niels too, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm watching from prison. Oh, you mean that guy was a Niels too? I guess Niels is a common name throughout Northern Europe. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna beat him down with D4. I mean, we could sack on E5. <laughs> Knight takes E5, F takes E5, Queen H5 check, come on. Let's be serious. So this is it, man. This is the critical test of Nefidov. Critical test. Pavel's game submission is a game, but there's no post-mortem. It's a, how do you say like the present form of post-mortem? It's just a mortem. Does that make sense? Anyway, guys, cheers. It's not weekend yet, but I feel kind of positive knowing that my mom is getting out of jail. But no, no, really, like she needed rehabilitation. She hurt her back and uh, it's not a joke. All right, so castles. Um, D takes E5, just structural advantage, huh? What are we doing? We have to call, I'm gonna have to call you here, Nefidov, in poker terms, I'm afraid. Call you on the structural, post-mortem is after death, pre-mortem. Yeah, pre-mortem. Postmortem seems like almost a double, double negative. All right. So we'll just play pure structural chess. Now, if I was pretty capable than he wants to be, if I put my bishop on e3, he'll hit me with c6 and then like knight d5. That's already looking stupid for me. So what am I supposed to do here? I'm not sure what the best darn move is. Bishop e3, c6. How about developing a knight or something? Knight c3. Maybe I have to do that. Just to keep him from playing like knight d5 at all cost. I like I like Astrobate's phonetic spelling of Nefedov. The PH. <laughs> We're gonna like westernize him. He's a philanderer. Philtelli. Think of different words that start with PH. Flatipus. Um, feels passive. Man, I thought you're pissing me off now. How can you get activity in this position? This is a bad move by me. A really bad move. Just bad. Pharmacy. Sometimes. <laughs> Pharmacy. That's an album cover for Sebado. They found the pharmacy that had no P on the front of the sign. And they made their... They made their, their album called Pharmacy. I guess a lot of drugs, you know, do harm people, so it kind of makes sense now, I get it. Call it a harmacy.
No, we use the F for fluke. <laughs> Spectacular Cavill. Oh, then when they get the chess player started on the word games. Turkey Pharmacy. All right. I wasted a tempo with the beautiful bishop f1. That was brilliant. That was absolutely ingenious to play bishop f1. I was like thinking, oh, knight d5, knight f4. Let's just put our bishop on f1. It's so logical. Do turkeys need pharmacies? Guys, we're just playing this one game with Nefedov because he's going to play this weekend at the... Um, Preston Congress in the UK so I was originally gonna play myself but I cannot sadly I could have technically but my mom I visit her every day in the hospital so it's kind of it would be sort of diss to to just go to go off to Europe while my mom is illin since I came here in the United States to help her anyway um, all right, so here we're going to try to keep Nefrov at bay, basically. Nefrov bay. At bay. How do we keep him at bay here? Need Carlson like technique. We do have a nice time advantage. Well, not, not exactly. I mean, I'm just, you know, giving him a chance. <clears throat> giving him a chance to play. Okay, this stops two birds with one stone. Does that sound like the way you're supposed to say it? This stops two birds with one stone. It it discourages birds. <laughs> it doesn't actually stop them, but it's sort of like it's like a bird. It's like a scarecrow, basically. This b three move, the scarecrow. It's not physically stopping the birds. It's not like it's not killing them either, killing birds with one stone. But it's kind of like. Discouraging two birds. Turkeys, to be exact. Oh, c5. That's a move I never would have imagined. That is an ugly positional move. Yeah, I don't like c5 for Nefidov at all. That looks like a major mistake. But he's got knight b3. Actually, knight c4, sorry. Knight c4. I still like white here. Even with the knight c4 nonsense. A lot of possibilities. I think c5 was an atrocity strategically. <laughs> Wonder Twins power. Well, we had the reference to the scarecrow, right? So, superheroes and, and villains. Um, scary monsters and super freaks. Knight d5. Knight d5. Threatens stuff. I was content to just play b3. That was my original plan. But I wanted to confuse Nefidov in this tactical melee. Threatening to win a pawn, sort of. I mean, King f7 just really seriously drops a pawn. You know, so that's not on the table. He plays this instead. Phyllis. Phyllis Diller. Alright. Now I guess you take with the pawn there, but I don't see any reason to do that. Got a dreamy endgame. He found that move.
Now, if it was tricky, I mean, he would find things like e4. I mean, it's, I don't think that's a really good move for him. You know, fixing another pawn on the wrong color. I'm not sure this is the right move either. Not so easy. Friends and family. I wanted to play king c4, but he has a stupid counterplay with e4, like sacking a pawn and trying to walk in with his king through e5. So I can't have my knight and my king there on that square, essentially. Wow. Fixating. There's got to be a way to make progress. Can't believe you can do that. Play h4. He lost on time. I mean, it does look like he's holding here. I mean, h4 was a very good move. Had he not played that, I would have played g4. And still, I'm not sure. This is not necessarily a win for white. Computers give me a really large advantage here. 1.5. I can't say I see the winning, the winning plan, though. All right, guys, let's go on. Good job, Nefidov. Tough, tough game. Let's go on to our um, our first game analysis with Astrobate. Good, good. I'll be there. All right, here's Astrobate. Thursday commentary stream submission. Nimzovich defense. Astrobate is white. Well, the problem with going with the king of c4, which was the right plan, turkey farm. I think I can do it, but I need to set it up properly. So how I have to do it somehow, like my knight has to be on d3 or something. Because he'll play e4 and sack a pawn and then walk his king through e5 and f4. Nefidov always tough. Okay, Astrobate here playing white. He got his rating up in the high 1600s, by the way, last week, guys. Astrobate declining the... the the critical continuation. You're supposed to play pawn takes pawn. There really isn't another good move except for maybe knight c3. I, I consider knight c3 like equal. And the only way for white to really play for an advantage against the Scandinavian is to take it, acerbate. It's not really good to play e5. This is a very popular move with amateurs who don't know theory. But basically it's it's just kind of inferior for white. Like a good Karo Khan or a good French. So black, you know, now should have at least equality. The computer giving black an advantage. Let me turn the engine off. We don't need the engine on all the time. I wanted to see Nefidov's final position there. Good luck, Nefidov. With the tournament, man. I will keep you in my thoughts. So e4, d5, e5. Now we have knight c6. 
Yeah, that's cool. It's it's actually up Yobanis' alley. Um, he's a player who likes to play, though. This is not the standard way to play, though. I mean, mostly bishop f5, people who like the Karo Khan, and I, I, like, I think I like c5. If you want to be funky, you can probably play knight h6. One of my favorite. One of my favorite moves. All right, so knight c6, d4. Um, now we transpose to like the main line of the, basically the main line. You ruined Aspirate String of Emotes. By the way, thanks to Dim and Merle, uh, Merle Dixon and Nils for donating bits. Dim's not here tonight, but thanks to Merle Dixon and, and Nils tonight for donating bits to support the stream. I wanna thank you guys. Please do so. Let's start a bit war. Unfortunately, Nils is under the weather, so don't don't try to get him involved. Um, wait till he's better. For a, he's not up to a bit war tonight. Let's do e5. Soltika, what's up? Um, I'm sorry. Let's. I've played f6. I had a former student of mine who was a strong player, Chris Williams. Um, he he used to play f6. Bishop f5 is the main line, but I I, I think between those two moves, they're both good. Um, black played e6 though. Okay, so now all you're doing is playing like an inferior French defense with a knight on c6. This this has got to be a mistake. Pop Gabor against Petagny Tamash. So Pop Gabor, quite a strong Hungarian grandmaster. I played. I've known him since he was a teenager. Um, we played some games once I killed one of his GM norms. But uh, Petany Tamas is like a Slovakian, I think. Slovakian, Hungarian, I don't know. So e6, knight f3. Yeah, here, I mean, you know, a lot of people would probably play f4, but that's really a stylistic thing. That's what Pop Gobbler played. You don't have to play f4. It supports the chain, though. It seems kind of logical. Spectacular Camel wants to be in the top three. He made it in the top three with a 100-bit donation. So it's up to you, really. I mean, it makes sense to play the f4, though, because black is likely going to play f6. Not having c5 as a disposal at his, at his disposal. Your opponent has a question mark by his name. He has a question mark by his rating. Mm. See, now f6. And since you don't have f4, it's hard to maintain your center. So you're going to need to play... Uh, a Nimzovician idea here, basically, bishop b5, in order to, I think when you see f6, you're going to need to go bishop f5 to properly fight for the e5 square. Um, and even a6 might be an idea for black. One brave soul actually played that move. Afro <laughs> Mayo's opponent. All right, so bishop b4 check. This is utterly loony. Just totally off the map. Whose games are in the queue? Everybody's. It's a long queue, so stay tight or loose if you're drinking too much. <laughs> what is it? If you're loose and you're drunk. I have a saying here. Wait, where did it go? See, this is one of my one of my sayings here. This is this is like an old school. This is one of those I never showed this on the stream, but this is one of those uh, old school ship things can you guys see this this is our saying here now I, the stream is lagging so i want to see how it looks you can't really see like the small writing All right. Anyway, that was entertaining. It's an old skill. We run a tight ship here. <laughs> it says we run a tight ship here. However, some of us have been getting tight a little too often, which means drunk and old school, old school like sailor talk. So, all right, let's get back to the analysis here. Um, M. Blochik, you're on the mobile. Welcome. Okay. So, horrible move, bishop b4. Now, probably he should just go back the other way, but he plays bishop a5. 
You could probably just unleash the B4A4 at this point, gaining space. But now, yeah, now I don't think it's necessary to play bishop e5. You should probably just play bishop d3, castle short, and place your, your queen on e2, or something like that. Black has shown no interest in playing. Yeah, I think here is a preferred square, acerbate, controlling that diagonal. Thou shall have two or three pints before the first game. Sorry, I have to fix something. Took my, I took my hanging down, and now it's like the screw fell out. All right. So bishop d3 better than bishop b5, a6, bishop g5. This is a provocative move. I, I guess it's okay. I would think that black can play queen d7. Probably not a bad defense. This is also okay, f6. Interesting battle. I just don't like black's bishop on a5. Who do I sound like that talks too loud? Reminding myself of an actor. Okay, e takes f6, g takes f6, bishop takes c6, king e7. What? Wait, hold on a minute. This has to be like a mouse slip. Totally bamboozled him. He bamboozled himself with king e7. Oh my god. Say what? So why don't we just recapture here? I mean, okay, knight e5 is coming. The ultimate Nimzovich sacrifice. I think that's that's an offer that you can't refuse, right? That's nasty. You got queen h5 check, mates on f7. Then you got the fork over here, which wins a piece. So the funny thing is, like, at the end of the day, this guy, like, blundered with king e7. But actually, I think the truth is, like, he was almost, like, equally lost, even if he recaptured. The knight e5 is so crushing. I mean, probably his best is to... I mean, you're winning a piece back, at the least. You could go adventurous and play queen h5 check. And like flush him out, you know. Oh, that's that's winning his queen. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, okay. So it's just over. There's no mate, sadly. You know, not immediately. There's no mate on f7 because he goes out to d6. Sadly, there's no mate. You just have to settle for the queen. Good job, Astrobate. He saw it all, and that's why you play king e7. 85 anyway. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's weird. And like, it looks like Astrobate had it pretty much kind of figured out. F takes g5. Oh, no. The computer suggests f4. And says Astrobate's move is a mistake. Raise your hands if you would have seen f4. You know, like, seriously. No, f4 is not on the, on the agenda. And f4 is like, I don't even know if like Steinitz would have found that. f4. Oh, Mule Skinner's here late. Early is on time. On time is late, and late is inexcusable. No promises, Mule Skinner. Uh, because we have a long list. Especially if Infinite if Flash just resubscribes or gets resubscribed. f4 is not for humans. All right, so you played the horrible queen h5. Just kidding. I mean, that's what most people would have played. You didn't have to sacrifice the beast. He was being adventurous, right? No, I mean, king e7 made sense. It's not so stupid, actually. I mean, you, you still have two pieces hanging. I made fun of the guy for playing this move, but objectively, you know, okay. Knight e5 was brilliant, man. F takes g5, queen h5, and now h6. I still don't see a mate. You're going to need more than mate here. He can't resist, though, playing the the queen f7 check. I mean, objectively, you should just, like, win the rook on h8 with knight g6 check. But Astrobate gets materialistic. So, I don't envision any mate. I mean, c5 is illegal. c4, c5 is illegal. Because your king's on e1. Knight d2. 
That's a cute one. To play knight d2, and if he takes, then you mate him with knight c4. I mean, that's like, you almost gotta play this. I would definitely play this, man. You gotta play this. And then, and then on pawn takes, this isn't mate, though. Oh, no. You just suck it out to d5. Oh, my God. <laughs> there has to be a mate here. Check it out. Check here. Oh, my God. Queen here. I never would have seen this. And castle's queen side. King e2. The king walk. And mate. I mean, how can you not see that, Aster Bait? Anybody could see that. Everyone saw this except for you. Everyone in the room saw knight c4 check except for you. This is... That's awesome. But all forced. <laughs> knight d2 is just too tempting, though. How could you not play knight to d2? Knight there, just the routine, going for the queen, getting materialistic, here, here, bishop d7, and oh no, he's a self-mate, he self-mated himself, nice job Azerbate, Azerbate just saw he was winning the bishop, didn't realize it was check, no I'm just kidding, <laughs> who told that to you William, what's that, who told me what, um, this is when I lost to Lembit Ol. I, I told this story in the stream before, like some months ago. Alexander Ivanov, Russian-American Grandmaster, who I thought was my friend. <laughs> after I lost the 15 moves against Lembit Ol on the stage with White, after playing this, like, Ivan Sokolov novelty or something, and then, like, blundering three moves later, I... I was like, oh man, did you see what happened to me? And that's what he said to me. You know, I was like, crushed. Um, all right, so Mule Skinner is the last one. So, move 11 is up next. Move 11, is he in the house? Maybe not. Maybe he's out playing. Move 11 had a good tournament this Thanksgiving weekend. Pretty good tournament, Thanksgiving weekend. All right, let's go to move 11 is... So many one of his games from this tournament I just mentioned. He played well in Philly in a tournament at the National Chess Congress. This is a draw he has against National Master Eddie Tion from the National Chess Congress. So this is move 11, who may or may not be here. I didn't see him in the stream. Um, can I just blow this up somehow? Open. Okay, open. I'm learning how to use Lee Chess more every day. Where am I on the list? You're next, sir. So, this is a 2270 USCF US rated um, opponent against um, move 11. So he's been working, he's been watching some Gustafsson videos, I know, and uh, move 11 has been working on, on that kind of stuff, and, and he's got some ideas how to play the black side of the Catalan. I thought this was going to be a Catalan, it says Catalan. This is not a Catalan. Am I on the right game? I was on the right wrong game. Okay. So this is the correct game. Sorry. So it is a Catalan. D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, G3. Um, yeah. So JCS, Catalan. Where's uh, our old friend from Germany, Ananas? Dim, 2270 is almost saying to FIDE ELO or more. Okay, I think that the USCF equivalent between FIDE and USCF is about like 50 to 50, 50 points inflated. 50 to 75. It's always changing a little bit. Um, from year to year, it, it goes up and down. But I think the USCF ratings are still, they're still inflated over FIDE. Um, so 50, 50 to 70 points or so. So a guy who's 2270 US should be about 2200 feet a. Yeah, more or less 2200 feet a. Exactly. Should be. G3, D5, Knight F3, Bishop E7. Move 11 is here. We just started your game. Bishop G2, castles, castles, D takes C4, and now Queen C2. And um, several times in the stream, I have mentioned this move B6, which I think is really interesting. And the theory is just starting to be, like, pretty well known, I guess. 
Um, it looks like bishop g5 cemented itself. Because black can sack the exchange with knight e5. I mentioned this a lot in the stream. I just want to re-mention it. Because it is a kind of fun line. You sack the exchange on a8. Bishop takes, queen takes. Looks like theory has settled on bishop g5, just not going into that, accepting the exchange sacrifice. But, um, you know, I'm really kind of doubtful that this is necessarily automatically, you know, anything. Pass pawn 99, mainline Catalan. Well, queen c2 is mainline Catalan, mainline open Catalan. I mean, black can also not take on c4, which is also very critical. You know, declining the Catalan by playing like d6 or... You know, playing the closed Catalan with d6 or b6, or c6 or b6. It's usually c6 or knight bd7, and later, later b6, c6. Um, there is a famous game between Onishuk and Shanklin with that exchange sack. Really? Infinite flash chess. Really? Queen c2? There is? I guess they're just outrated by these guys. It's been played by Aroni and Mamadyarov. These are all new games, you know. The Ar Aronian Mamadyarov and Ding Loren Caruana. Um, so they're outrating Shanklin. <laughs> Onishuk just drags them down. You know, he's only 2630 or something. Um, but it's a really topical line. So anyway, this is where the fashion is now, A4. I've also played this. It's safe for white. You know, the main lines are, are, of course, like, you know, taking the pawn on C4. This is all so deeply analyzed, though. I think that's why people prefer A4. Yeah, Onishuk is the highest rated player who I ever beat, you know, in the crazy game where I played the Hippopotamus and did in Castle in the US Open. He was like 2660 when I beat him. People often ask me, like, who's the, who's the strongest player you ever beat? You know, he'd probably be it, but he's dropped down, you know, to like the low 2600s, high 2500s. Who knows where he is now? There's another Onishuk and they get confused, but Alexander Onishuk was, was Karpov's student. He's, he's a really, really class player. Um, the other Onishuk, he's playing like all kinds of sketchy stuff. So a4. Um, all right, so we got a lot of analysis here. Bishop d7. And I think this is the main line. There's really nothing else black can do. You could play knight to c6, I guess. I don't know what the deal is. I think there is, OK, there is c5. Maybe we talked about that. This is um. This is like a solid, sort of boring way to play, though. I mean, it seems like why would get like a just kind of lasting slight advantage in this type of line, symmetrical structure with a little bit more space and development for white. Um, all right. So, bishop d7 here, 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 and now, yeah, this bishop takes f3. I had a very similar game with white two years ago against Savelli Golubov. But I have the feeling I played bishop g5 against Golubov fairly early. Um, I mean, I'm not sure about white's you know move order and everything. I mean, looks all everything looks looks fine. There are other moves, though, white can play. Like I said, I think I played bishop g5 here against Golubov. But... You know, in that line, my idea is that sometimes my queen drops back to c1 if it's threatening to be attacked by bishop c6, bishop e4. I don't know. So rook d1. This is all theory, right? Knight c3. Now black plays like the Fort Knox variation. It's the Fort Knox variation of the of the Catalan. Um, so I remember that Aronian did play this a couple times, but I those are long ago, 2012, 2010. I thought that Levon had a more recent game, actually, against someone, but it must have been a slightly different position. Um, this isn't real topical at the moment. Jeffrey Zhang versus Wesley So, 2017. It's a very safe way for black to play, you know. Now, obviously, c6 doesn't help our development very much. So if, if we play c6... It's just like we're we're very passive here. And I'm just just thinking, you know. I mean, even if white were to just play like e4 or something, it seems like he has a good game. But the computer is suggesting b3. All sorts of possibilities. You could definitely play b3 
as a long-term sort of pawn sacrifice. Black has no development. Um, I think the pressure down these lines is, is really good. So I think the move 11, obviously, yeah, he knows this. So um, I've never really played the open Catalan with black, to be honest. So I don't know the theory as well. Um, knight c6. Bishop takes c6. B takes c6. The structure looks bad, but that's kind of a standard thing that happens in some Catalan lines. I mean, obviously your king side could be weak, but black doesn't have that many pieces left. He can't magically teleport his queen to h5 and play knight to g4. I mean, if you could do that, <laughs> you'd be good. So there's a lot of theory here. Wow, okay, so bishop g5. This is apparently um, a standard line. White figures to trade pieces, maybe reduce black's counterplay and, and just have a better structure. I mean, the other move suggested is a5, which is okay. You know, I mean, I guess you've got rook a4 sometimes. You fix the weakness on a6. But at the same time, the, B, the a5 pawn itself, you know, I would think this would be kind of double-edged. The a5 pawn itself could become a weakness. So that seems more risky. The engine doesn't like it at all, a5. No, it does now. <laughs> Whatever. Bishop g5. All right. Yeah, so... I'm going to turn the engine off, because it's probably hogging up all our, our speed. Queen b8. Queen b8, queen b3 lines. Well, queen b8 is a very natural move. Queen b8, it looks like we're playing the Nimzovich defense. You know, that's that's a maneuver I like to make. You know, you very rarely do that in the King's Indian. But a lot of openings like the Steinitz, Roy Lopez, um, Nimzovich, it can be maneuvered. But queen b8 feels fancy, but it keeps the rook protecting the a pawn in case that ever gets attacked. But you see, you're looking at the a5, queen b8. I think Matt's talking about this here. In particular. I mean, even there, it's not clear. I mean, it's not clear if you should play rook b8. Nothing's attacking the a6 pawn. Of course, if anything happens to that pawn on c4, it's like, would be nice that a6 was protected. Queen b8 makes way for the for the rook the other rook to come to the d file, which is good. You know, it's kind of a way of getting all the heavy pieces into the game. So I think that's important. As far as like playing queen b3 or something, it's just an option. You can also play like queen b7 and c5 and liberate your queen on the long diagonal. You know, there's a lot of ideas here, but we can't go into everything. Um, yeah, it looks fine. All the moves look fine. But I like. I think that rook b8 or queen b8 has got to be better than knight d5, which is a move that I don't really even understand what it does. Okay, bishop g5. And now you play queen b8, probably getting the lines mixed up. I mean, it certainly doesn't seem like a ridiculous move, but your bishop... Your bishop is unprotected and, and this variation. You know, and the pin is live here, so... He's just going to take and then play knight e4. Have a very simple position where he has a slight edge based on structure. Um, move 11 said, I thought queen b3, queen b3, c b3 would be dangerous, but I don't know the theory. Well, generally, I mean, the pawn on b3 looks like it might fall, you know, in a lot of lines. So it wouldn't be the first thing I'd be in a hurry to play. But I think calculation really rules here. Getting in c5 is clearly a strategic idea for black. And maybe you could just build up, you know, without playing queen b3. Maybe you just play something like queen b8, queen b7, rook b8 and have have play. But right now, it seems like the main thing is that, you know, he's trying to play like knight e4. If he can take on f6 and play knight e4. So I kind of like thought it was fun what happened in the game. Queen b8, bishop takes f6, and then he took with the g pawn. I really like this move. Um, I don't know if move 11 just came up with this over the board. Or just it was a lesser of the evils. But, you know, I mean, this seems like something that would be preferred by a player who played, like, the black side of the Rubenstein French or something. I mean, 
Rubenstein himself might have played this move. You actually eliminate back rank mates. You have the ability to play f5 and control the e4 square. You liberate your bishop with more squares. If you play gf, you know, so... And I don't think that white's going to have, like, an attack against your king. Um, I mean, bishop takes was just, like, knight e4. You see here, there's a there's a Halkias game against the random master. And I think that, objectively, you know, you probably did the right thing here. The Korneyev has a game with black. That's a good sign. You're not alone, man. Oleg Korneyev was over 2,600. Looks like his rating's up pretty high. Um, 94, queen b4. Wow, this has all been played. But, but Korneyev played something else, queen b3. Because he only drew, but he's basically trying to draw on the black side of this Catalan. Um, queen b4 may be more of a winning attempt. Maybe more of a winning attempt, not trading queens, of course. Ultimately, he's going to get the pawn on c4. So what's the idea if we play like queen b4? Rook a, c1, f5, knight d2, and c5. D takes c5. There's only one game, which was really kind of complicated. But, I mean, even if you just played like bishop takes c5... The end game is going to force, he's going to force a trade of queens. And then you're going to be tortured, like, kind of tortured here. My game with Nefidov, a little bit like that. Um, yeah, so I agree with this, this, this decision to play, you know, GF. And, uh, and thought it was kind of creative. You play queen b4. He plays rook a c1. The computer gives it a dubious. That was the same move, ironically, that the guy in the game played. It looks normal. Computer says knight d2 right away. Here, rook a c1, rook f b8, keeping a6 protected. It also gives the king a flight square toward the center, maybe, for the endgame. And we just have a tough endgame here. But you did not manage to achieve the magic break. You know, that's... The key break in the Catalan is to achieve c5. So he's... Yeah, I mean, any kind of Aronian game in the Catalan with white. I mean, the focus is on c5 bind. Very classic. So you did takes, 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 takes. No, he can't because of this. Okay, so he, he could have taken on c6, but he didn't like rook takes e2 naturally. Yeah, rook takes c6, rook takes e2, rook takes c7, rook takes e4, rook takes e7. That actually looks okay for black. Um, rook takes c6, rook takes e2, knight c3, rook c2, right? I mean, just for argument's sake. This looks fine, right? I was looking at this. But you're not even down, I mean, you're not even down any material here. But this allows a tactic, ouch. That would be really bad. <laughs> so you have to play like here. Give the pawn back, but it's fine for black. It's probably equal. No, move 11, you did well. Um, but I don't know about this moment here, what the best move is. Here, he plays rook d2. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're up a pawn, you can give a pawn back. Maybe you play c5 in some moment to force a rook end game. This is a really compl complicated game, so I'm not going to be able to go, you know, spend too much more time. I don't blame you for making this this, on, this pawn sacrifice. That was a good job. I think there, rook b8 is also okay. But he was afraid of rook d4, I guess. It's kind of a strange location for the rook, though, on d5, because honestly, you know, rooks are supposed to be like distance pieces, and it looks kind of up close. What if you played f5? Yeah, f5 looks good, man. Yeah, f5 preempting his e4. Though, I'm not 100% sure what's happening. I, th I think it should be okay. It should be a draw, basically. It should be a draw. This probably gives him a slight edge. Looks like both sides played very reasonably. White managed to get a very, very small edge. Now he's improving his king. 
Now it's getting like Magnus, kind of Magnusy. Right, 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 right. Yeah, see, I mean, here this decision to take on c7 or not to take Shakespeare. Could be a very complicated endgame, you know. I would be strongly, strongly tempted to go for this. Oh, you got just rook b4, a5. You probably calculated this. This this wins. So you can actually win the pawn. You might as well just go here. I mean, I don't even see the point. Let's say this. I'm not certain this is a win for white. Though I, I once lost a very similar position against Ijak Jula, um, thinking that I was drawing. But I'm not going to go on record and say that this is necessarily winning for white. But I mean, it's 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 very unpleasant. So, let's try to do better. So you don't take. You play King D7. Apparently, like King E7 was better because of this fork on C5. And move 11 didn't see it. In, in retrospect, going here so you don't get like knight c5 forked, king and rook would have would have changed changed the the game. It's a really good fight, though. It's reminding me of Magnus versus Caruana. Yeah. So here it looks like a mistake trading down because you basically got the end game you could have had before when you did rook takes b3 so apparently your bishop is just kind of doing like two things you know keeping him busy so it would have been better to just hold hold the position for some reason i don't fully understand it's better to go to c7 than play king c6 i'm not really sure I guess it's another check. Anyway, it would have been a tough fight. Now you go into this ending, yeah, and we're back to that same end game. King e5, interesting. That's a move I wonder how much... Did you consider this, king e5? I'm stuttering like Alexander Ivanov now. King e5. I mean, anytime it's a rook pawn, you have good drawing chances. Don't forget. King c7 here, here. Now, this h4 is probably a possible mistake. I don't know. Best move according to the engine, though. I was just wondering if it weren't some lines, if there weren't some lines where he could actually walk out here. But I guess it's basically never going to happen. So he played the computer move. I don't know that I would have played h4 there. I mean, in a way, I don't know what the plan is. To play h4, then king h3, maybe. Yeah, I guess that's the plan. h4, then king h3, and then king g4, and then f3, and like bring the whole house forward, uh, basically. So king d6, f3, h6, f4. Yeah, you can't play h5. You know how similar this reminds us of the Caruana Carlson rook end game. In a way, active king for black, pawn down. Very, very similar scenario. So, move 11 is like almost like saying he's playing for a win with this move. I mean, couldn't you just like repeated position with king c5? Now it's starting to look kind of dangerous if, if this rook comes down and eats that pawn. He was like bloodthirsty, like playing for the win. Yeah, that's scary. I don't know. Last move, rook b4. Now I'm going to turn the engine back on. Rook a3, rook b2, king f3. Well, if he ever tries to do anything, you know, basically, if he ever tries to do anything, it's like rook a3, um, rook b2 check, king there, and then, you know, the pawn is hanging. So 
If you ever try to get active, it's like rook a1. Maybe, yeah, just rook a1, I would think. It's good enough for a draw now. Okay, Nils, next game is Nils, who is asking, was it his turn? Nils, up next. It's, um, it's cool. We have an hour and a half left. This is Nils Study. What color are you? Um, you're black. You must be black. So what? What do we have for colors here? Nils must be black. I'm gonna operate under the assumption that he's black. Did he say? In the message? It just said it invited you to. Yeah. I thought you were black, so e4, d6. And now e5. We talked about this last time in terms of George Hickel or whatever, and I mean, I don't think that it's a good winning attempt against low rated players. But since the guy's 1981, it's probably okay. Knight bd7, bishop c4, bishop e7, castle c6. I have to consult my teammate, Sultan Varga. He's the expert on the Philidor. I'm out of my depth in these Philidor positions, to be honest. Um, I've only played with white, and um, we had some interesting games that, that actually Move 11 submitted. He had a couple games with the Fide Master. a4, this is standard. h6. Now, the h6 move is um, a peculiar one that I don't, you know, I don't really know. Um, of course, the Philidor is hard to play. I mean, it's like the old Indian, you know. You have less space, and it's very clear, but it's solid at the same time. I think you have to be a pretty good player to handle these openings well. You know, I don't think that low-rated players handle the, the Philidor, the old Indian, at all well. But they can be rewarding openings against players who tend to overextend themselves. Um, but this h6, he says, inconsistent with my other play, don't play h6 when you don't have the plan of g5, knight f8. Well, yeah, I mean, basically, that's this lion's jaw or whatever, right? h6, g5, knight f8, knight g6. I guess you're supposed to play, like, queen c7 at some point to support the e5 pawn, right? And then you go h6 and, and g5, knight g8, knight f8 knight f to g6 um, but that's not really I mean I, it may be recommended in some books but it's not really like respected as a as a really legitimate system for black um, so h6 yeah so what should you do just make a normal move I mean castles castles when you play like b6 queen c7 a6 this this is totally standard um, Stuff for black. The black lion. Did I say black lion? Did I say that? Or did I say lion's jaw? Turkey farm. Did I say black lion? Did I call it that? Alright, h6. Queen e2. Castles. Rook d1. Queen c7. So he doesn't do queen c7. He takes here. Now, I mean, I think h6 is going to hurt black in the long run because this knight might be able to sink into like these squares on f5 and or g6. Wonder if there's time for your game tonight, Mule Skinner. We should do. We should be able to try to make it. You'll probably be last though. E takes d4. So typically, okay, the right idea of taking here, you know, it may make sense like with the queen on e2. But I think h6 is going to hurt Nils. You know, he's supposed to have the pawn back on h7 and then be more developed in order in order to do something like rook e8, bishop f8, and try to play against the queen on e2 along the e-file. Or also there's d5, actually, in a lot of lines sometimes. From what I recall, looking at some of these positions. The Gummy Bear gifted a tier 1 subscription to Infinite Flash Chess. Gummy Bear BF... 
Gummy Bear BF, thank you. It's an infinite flash. You you are. Nothing wrong with being a hobo. In another life, you'll be something else. E takes D4, knight takes D4, queen C7. Now, yeah, I mean, it feels like H6 isn't working with this, this giving up the center and trying to play sharply type of approach. So white plays lamely here with H3. I mean, is there anything wrong with knight F5? Gummy Bear, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for supporting the stream with a gift sub for Infinite Flash Chess. You said you're a hobo. I said there's nothing wrong with being a hobo. Um, you said you feel like a hobo. Chess Hobo to be your new streamer name. All right, Queen C7, H3. I mean, H3 just seems kind of lame. Rook E8. Bishop F4. That's maybe a hidden point be behind like the reason why he played H3, but you know, you're going to stick your knight in E5, so there's no problem with that. This is like a waiting move. Bishop F8. Stockfish, is, as Nils said, wants to play A5. I think it's also okay. I doubt that it's a major mistake, though, to play bishop f8 and allow a5. I mean, if he plays a5, you can play rook b8 and then and then free yourself. When I'm white in these philidors, I'm always reticent to do that, you know, because once you do a5, that gives black the free chance to play rook b8 and, and then move his b pawn. I think of it this way. Like, when you play a4, you're, like, restricting black. But when you play a5, and sometimes, you know, you're actually, like, letting him... You're actually letting him free, you know. So a5 is kind of like spatially, I would call it like a spatially greedy move in a sense. Can be overextending. Bishop d7 looks good. Now, okay, you know, the critical thing will be like, can he play f4? Will it overextend him? You know, maybe you play b5 here, but maybe, um, you know, you could prepare it by moving like rook b8. Um, or maybe you can move your knight, you know, let's say. I know Zoli my teammate does this <coughs> and sometimes black's positions look ugly but I mean this is protected I know it looks scary yeah I, I guess you, you're gonna have to wait for f4 to happen objectively before you can play knight g6 it's almost like you need to move your queen to a different square I mean is it ridiculous to play this actually I mean queen c8 to I that sacrifice and get off the diagonal of the h2 bishop and maybe set up d5s let's check out queen c8 with the engine it also stops knight f5 scourges knight f5 so the computer just says and eh, you have too much i have too much space here you're just like getting smushed i guess we can blame it all on h6 basically but I'm I'm not sure what engine analysis is here. Like rook a c eight. I mean that's that's like utterly lame. Rook a c eight. I mean it doesn't even seem to have a point, you know. So you're in trouble already. And I think you know the question is still. I mean this looks like a practical try to play like queen c eight. I don't know what to suggest. You tried to play b five. Okay, maybe this isn't so bad. The downside of this is that your rook can get drawn away to a eight. I think. Which isn't really where you want to be in the center right now. Now that rook is drawn away from the action along the e-file. The white's going to need to do something, you know, immediate. It may not have anything that that crushing. There is obviously f4 and e5, just like brute force, caveman style. And if that's strong, I mean, it might even win a piece. This this really might what does it like win a piece like f4 knight g6 e5 almost like winning material of course he has to play f4 yeah he has to do it and he has to do e5 and he didn't do it that's that's tragic because f4 can you know become a weakness if you have time to resur you know resurface <laughs> your rook 
your rook coming back to e8 will save the day, maybe. But it's always precarious playing the Philidor, man. I mean, you're living on the edge of the precipice in these kind of lines, even if you play perfectly. You know, I find it very, very difficult to imagine playing for black. That's why why when Zoli, Zoli Varga plays it, I'm kind of cringing. But he always seems to know what he's doing. Got to be really well prepared. Um, f4, knight g6, and then he went for queen c4, this primitive attack against f7. But obviously e5, I mean, always should look for the forcing move. This is very forcing. It's hitting the knight. There's discoveries against the queen. There's obvious pressure down the d-file against d6. And taking is like a disaster. Doesn't this just lose a piece? Because e6 will be next. So that's just over. Over and out. I mean, this just resigns for black. You cannot take. I don't know what you're going to play now. Like knight e8? Oh my gosh. What, what does black even do in this position? I have no clue. It looks horrible. Um, so he missed that play queen c4. Yeah, he's robbed himself or herself, I don't know who it is, of, of the possibility of playing e5, it looks like. So this is interesting. So you play this, you allow knight takes b5, and then queen b6 check, knight to d4, and you're going to take on e4. Does that even work? It does. It does. So we're just trading pawns effectively. He actually gave that line here. Queen d3. Pushing white away from the center. But what's the plan? I mean, do we have something? See, I'm concerned that, that B4 isn't really part of a plan. you got to have something. So you found this D5. Ah, and so you can stick a knight on E4. No, good, good job. Good job staying alive. I'm surprised he didn't play E5 here. Yeah, but then there's all sorts of nasty stuff. Knight there, bishop c5 check, queen b6. You'll just be barreling down this diagonal with the knight fork on f2. And gosh. Yeah, you could also have like c5, c4. That's a really strong, a very thematic move, d5. So he takes. You take. So you, you, you played this and you planned this before b5. You saw the position and thought you were winning a piece here. Ah. So you thought, Bishop, this is, this is just a greedy move by White. I mean, there's really no reason he has to, like, give up a strong Bishop to try to win a weak, you know, pawn. Um, or an Isolani, let's say. I, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't take that unless I was 100% airtight, you know, Bishop takes d5. I guess he figures he has c4. But you thought you were winning a piece, but in what way? You thought like, in what way are you winning a piece? I think you're just fine. You don't need to win a piece. You know what I mean? Like you should have compensation based on your bishops. Look at your bishops. Your bishops are like vicious in this position. I mean, his bishop is buried on h2. He has weaknesses all over the place. And he's giving up his bishop, his long range, late range b3 bishop here. I mean, you should be fine here. You don't need to. You don't need to win a piece to be okay in this position for black, you know. And and to make it, to make this position okay. I mean, your rook is hanging, okay. So you have to make a move. So this is the line he gives, I guess. Queen d3, bishop b5. Queen e4, bishop e2. Queen e2, rook takes f5. Now that line does win a piece. So, I don't know if that's forced, but black is totally doing alright. But instead you played rook a5 right away. 
letting him keep that dangerous white squared bishop. And now you figured you had bishop b5. I see. Oh, man. So he has this queen takes. Oh, that's nasty. He has the knight takes g6 check. And that's brutal because he's hitting f7. Yeah, I think to take away from this, um, I think to take away from this, you know, what you should be appreciating is is how important that bishop is rather than winning a pawn. Obviously, if you thought you're winning a piece, you thought you're winning a piece and you missed a tactic. I mean, that that's something that we all do, you know, but in general, just appreciate like how important like getting that white square bishop was um, would be something to take away from this. You you kind of underestimated the danger of of that piece or the the importance of that piece in you know in this case in the defensive aspect, um, right? So now you're like just your position has been ruined and you're down two pawns. Luckily, he doesn't have like knight f five. He could probably play it anyway. No, now his queen is attacked. All right. Well, he doesn't really have many moves then. Queen, queen f five or queen g three. He plays queen d three. Right. He'd love to trade queens and be two pawns up in an ending. So I think you did the right thing here. You can't trade queens. Obviously, this is a disaster. King h1. I mean, objectively lost position. There's not much you can do. The knight's coming to f5. This is... Yeah, try to win a pawn back and pray. Feels like there's almost something here. This is a nice idea. Come over. Two pawns down, but he's got a discovery. Oh man. So this is just gonna force it's just gonna force a trade of stuff, basically. Trading pieces when he's up two pawns. Nice find. He's got a check on d8. What? Why can't he play rook d8 check? That gets an exclamation point in the notes. Knight takes here. So he just lost an exchange. Oh man. And with this queen and knight combination, what are you like winning now? Rook a1? You're almost winning. He has two pawns for the exchange, so it's 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 pretty creepy. Knight f5, and after pressing the clock, he just hung a piece. Oh my god. You're almost winning. Like rook a1. Absolutely, you shouldn't lose this. It's a question of whether you're winning or it's a draw. You just blundered. So rook a1, he does have knight h6 check. Is that a strong move? I don't know what the deal is with knight h6 check. Computer says black is clearly better after queen e3. But it's not so easy. The engine says it's winning. But I mean, okay, for a computer, maybe. Even the computer can't decide. You're clearly, clearly better. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think there's a forced win. So, all right, man. We've all had these these bad blunders, but time pressure. Okay, guys. Uh, Artie Fufkin's up next. We're gonna get through as many games as we can. We have an hour and ten minutes remaining, so I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster through the games here. Where's Artie? Guys, thank you for supporting the stream. Dim, Merle Dixon, Spectacular Camel, Nils. Nils is on fourth. Acerbate and Queen Savage. 
All right, Artie, Artie may not be here. I'm not sure. He's got a Grandmaster game. Okay, Malakov versus Bolagon. Yeah, knight g3, dropping the knight two different ways. That's a really bad hallucination. So, so Malakov is a really good English player. This is an interesting line. Um, this is the submission of, of Artie Fufkin. It's a game. Uh, Chebanenko Rapid Tiebreak 2014. I've played this a lot, Bishop b4. My last game was with, with Sam Shanklin in Budapest in like 2008. We had a game that was a draw where he was black. He played this line. The only time I've ever faced Bishop c5 over the board, I think. Back in the day, I used to play Bishop a5 and and I also play, I've also played a5 experimentally and I've also seen Knight c6 played occasionally here on the stream. Someone was playing that against me. Dim, thank you for the donation. So this is kind of like the gold standard now for this variation, bishop c5. Yeah, this is my game with Shankland. c6, I guess. I don't remember now. It was a long time ago. Um, I mean, I don't know what else you can really do. There are some weird lines where you could go like b4. It's funny, like you would expect bishop d4. But this looks like it scores pretty well for white. The bishop ends up misplaced. So it looks like the majority of players actually go back to f8. That's kind of cool. And black's done pretty well there. Alright, so let's take a look. Knight f3, c6, knight back, queen e7. Yeah, now white plays d4. He takes d4, knight takes d4. I mean, that's good in a vacuum. White has forced black to give up their strong point. So Malakov versus Bolagon. Malakov's really an expert, you know, on the white side of the English. You know, this guy is... He was making a living off of playing c4. He was also a very good player with the accelerated dragon with black. So his repertoire kind of connected. Um, now e3... Yeah, this is surprising, the move e3. You would think, like, white would really try to play g3. Is there some problem with g3? It must be some kind of trick. Why is g3 so bad? No one's actually played it. I really have no clue. I mean, it just seems like a normal move. That's weird. Then no one's played g3. Strange. They tried the strange knight f5 and the passive e3. So e3, castles, bishop e2. This setup is basically passive for white, so black, black like, equalized. Yeah, this is weird. There's something artificial about this. Something very artificial about putting your bishop on f3. You're basically black now in a, in a IQP position. cd, cd. It looks like Karpov playing black in a in a Panov a Karakhan. White is black and black is white now. Because white has played this passively. Knight c6. Basically Bolagon played this this part really well. This is another Karpov move. Strong pointing d4, kind of with a passive setup, bishop on f3, knight e5, b3, the only way to develop the bishop. Well, I mean that's not true. I mean you could play here. I don't think I don't think this is very exciting. Not a very exciting position. b3, knight f3, knight f3, bishop g4. And now we have something that's a little like move 11's game, where he like allows the doubled f pawns. Black could certainly play bishop takes f3 with a reasonable game. You gotta be careful how to judge this. You know, bishop takes f3, pawn takes f3, queen here, threatening to come there. But maybe it's not so bad. Knight e4 instead. Bolagon playing like an active style IQP position. This is just a totally standard IQP position. Now bishop back to d7. It's nice. It looks both ways. So I like the way that Bolagon's played. Then knight f4. Yeah, this is where things start to look creepy. Like the pawn suddenly... 
Maybe queen g5? Can we find another way of protecting that pawn? Let's see what the engine says. Did It did think about queen g5 for a moment. Interesting. You want to try to defend the IQP positions actively. It's actually suggesting rook c8. Rook c8, and if knight takes d5... We have some sort of counterplay. Wow. Queen g5 with advantage to black, according to the engine. It just goes to show you how you have to play IQP positions. You see, this is where it starts to go wrong, when you become passively tied down to your pawn on d5. All right, so anyway, knight takes e6. That's a surprising move. Why, why would you do that? It's like his worst piece. That's strange. I mean, you know, it's like one of your best pieces for his worst piece. He just plays like the obvious continuation. Black has this move, rook d6, defending. Something went wrong, though. Black starts to get tied up. That's not good. This is not good. So he basically just like blundered here. I mean, what happened here? More or, more or less everything's okay. Rook d6 here. And now you just need to defend carefully. So you had to play like rook c6. Probably he was afraid of something like b4. So that's the question. b4, bishop takes, let's say rook takes b takes, knight takes e6, with a lot of pressure on g7, and here here black's okay apparently has some sort of trick to go there. So there were there were ways that black could hold, but instead he, he went downhill. It's strange, this is really a strange game. That's analysis. b6, here, 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 now white's just crushing. g6. And this was a rapid game, so you've got to consider, you know, the, the time factor. White had, like, a winning sacrifice here with knight takes g6. He didn't see how this works. I don't see how it works either. How does this work? How does this work? Queen check. Forced to king up. Oh, man, that's brutal. And then knight has to go back. Man, no, that's the point, and this drops. That's a really hard line to see. This was just Artie Fufkin's suggestion. Grandmaster game, Malakov versus Bulagon. He missed knight takes g6. Tough combination to spot. He saw the idea, no doubt, but he couldn't work it out all the way. And now here, blundering, counter combination. Allowing knight takes f2, apparently. Just to show you how many Grandmasters... Okay, the lag, I'll turn it off. Usually one line, it's okay, but... Um, queen f7, bishop d4, now it's just back into technical, technical grandmaster land. This is very bad for black, because white has not only the better structure, but the safer king as well. With a fair amount of, um, a fair amount of simplification. Even though black still managed to maintain equal pawns, his pieces are fairly well placed. It's just like... The isolated pawn and the fact that the black king is more open. It's not even pawns. Black's down a pawn here, of course. Um, never mind. But, yeah, it's, it's just lost. It's just a pawn down with a bad structure. I don't think it's a strange game. I think it's a very typical game. Um, both sides made some mistakes tactically. But now it's just a positional win. And, and material. But keep in mind it was rapid chess, so both sides didn't play best moves. Yeah, he couldn't take on g5, unfortunately, because of knight e6. So he did this. Giving himself a prison rook. That's a strange decision. This rook is, is caught into the he's caught inside the Tetris, basically. Scissor pawns. 
comical. And now the rook is trapped. Next move with f3. Yuck. Alright, entertaining. So guys, we're going to move on with um, further game analysis from... Let me see. Yabatis, Merle Dixon, Soltigo, Percy, Infinite, and Mule Skinner. Alright, Yabatis is up next. He says, I played this game, I think it's an interesting game. Clearly not perfect, but I think it's a very nice game. It sounds like what Donald Trump would describe his game as. <laughs> One of his... Yes, it's a nice game. It's a very nice game. I think I played really well. Yeah, I think I'm really good. All right, no, um, Yabatis. Oh yeah, better include the game. All right, Yabatis versus owner 1995. He uses simple words to get the point across. All right. Request computer analysis. We don't need that. Okay, so Yabatis is white. C4, C5, Knight C3, Knight C6, G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2. So, what are we going to do here with black now? We've already played knight f6, so the Botvinnik type of setup is out. So there's really only a couple things black can do here. e6 and g6. d6 is the third choice. So, <laughs> tremendous play. Great players. Best TDs. No, those... No, the TDs... No, the TDs are totally... No, I mean, the TDs in the Ninth Circuit... <laughs> the TDs in the Ninth Circuit are just robbing us. Bishop G2. D6. No. No, no, no respect for TDs. <laughs> if they flash us. There's no respect for TDs. Any kind of judicial officials. D6, G6, or E6. Black plays D6, E3. This is Yabatis' favorite, you know, setup, and I think it's probably appropriate here, particularly against D6. Because we have a situation where the knight plays behind the pawns. We have um, pieces behind the pawns. I was talking to someone about this today. Korchnoi speciality. Coordinating the pieces and the pawns together as one unit. What I liked about the last press conference was that neither Carlson or Caruana would like to visit the White House with that president. Would they go on record <laughs> with this? Um, E3, I don't know, man. If, if Caruana, if he's real close to the sink field, he might have to. Um, E3, G6, knight on G to E2. Let's see. No, E3 is best. And then g6, knight on g to e2, bishop g7, castles. Yeah, this is absolutely best way to set up. And, and I think the one setup that cast out on d6, probably. So, objectively, there is no easy answer. Um, with the knight out on c6 early, maybe g6, but still e3. So you can't play the Botfinic system with, with the knight on f6. It needs to be on e7. So it's not clear what black should do. Bishop g7, knight on g to e2. I think you can probably try to play something weird here with black. But I'm not sure what to suggest, though. d6. These lines I've never fully really been able to comprehend. It looks a little like a King's Indian, actually. Okay, I'm just hypothetically wondering what would happen but anyways okay e3 g6 knight e2 bishop g7 castles castles d4 best move i had a game like this against um yvetta rylik once and i think she just did something like bishop d7 that seems to be you see that that's like the main move we had a game just like this it was like d4 bishop d7 h3 i think and then I think she even did like queen c8 or something ridiculous. I played like this. I mean, I just don't think that black's position makes all that much sense in this sort of scenario. Um, 
All right, d4. All right, so this is just a good position now. I think this is just good. I'm surprised, you know, the players of this level, like you see there's games by like Korobov. Okay, one game. Black's position seems inferior to me. Actually, e6 is not such a stupid move. He'd love to play d5, fix the structure. So Yabanis doesn't let him. But it's a really tough decision for white now, you know, to allow d5 or play d5 yourself. I feel like my preference would be to allow d5 and probably prepare some sort of c5 in response. Um, with the queen side majority. But instead he he uh, steps in the way of it. He plays d5. Yeah, I mean, this this doesn't really make sense. I mean, it seems like black should take here. It doesn't seem that bad for black. This bishop's free now. And what are you going to do? Are you going to take with the pieces? I mean, even if you get this, let's say queen takes. You're tied down to b2, and it's a little bit hard for white, you know, to mount pressure against d6 without, like, something imploding. I mean... Let's see, I'm going to just turn on the engine just for a second, just to see what it says, and then I'll turn it off. Yeah, this is like clear advantage to black, so it's overextended, you know. you got to take back with the pawn. I mean, this is basically what I'm trying to prove, that white has to take back with the pawn, and then I don't think it's that bad for black. Maybe he should, in fact, play this, rather than knight e7, which is kind of passive. So I think this is a huge mistake for black to play knight e7, speaking of passive. Now knight f4. Um, okay, I mean, there's a lot of moves you could play. I would still think you should focus on development. Guys, if anyone's interested in lessons, seriously, I am available. Um, due to many cancellations. If you're interested in taking chess lessons seriously, regularly, send me an email, videochesstrainer at gmail.com. Videochesstrainer at gmail.com. Also, don't forget, I've got a YouTube channel, Video Chess Training, on YouTube. And we've got a Discord channel you guys can check out here, Pub Slaggy. Um, anyway, thanks everybody for supporting the stream. Dim 900 this week, Marl Dixon with 400, Spectacular Camel 203. Shout out to those guys. So Knight F4, all right, so now he takes. I mean, Knight F4 is not a developing move. I like Knights on F4, but I'm wondering if you should just develop your pieces here in anything constructive. Sorry, not that move, the other thing to H3. Just h3. Just h3 to stop knight g4, I was going to say. I mean, it's still not easy, though, because where are you going to put this? If you, you still have to watch for knight f5, actually. How long everyone thinks Magnus will hold his title? Five or six years? I think that's fair guess. Very possible. Well, you, th you think that e takes d, c takes d, and you say that white space is good. But I don't think it's overwhelming, you know. It's not overwhelming. I've had struggles in these kind of structures. Knight f4. All right, so he played b6. Now it's like, how do I get a knight to c6? <laughs> That's the first thing I'm thinking about. Not going to be easy to do, but maybe you could swing it through d3, b4 to c6. Obviously, bishop a6 is an idea. He's going for it. Oh, there it is. There it is. The problem is he can play rook c8 and just kind of physically defend the square. That's what he did. Now, you could go a step further and play like queen a4 here. I'm wondering. Suddenly, paranoid black's going to sack an exchange on c3. I doubt that's realistically going to work. You guys think b6 was weakening? b6 wasn't my first choice for black here. He's got to stay active. I think the Fabiano would do okay here. His knight will go through f5. Maybe maybe queen b6, sorry. Well, queen a5 is a move too. Maybe queen b6, something like that. 
you could like sack a pawn, bishop e3, queen takes pawn, bishop d4. Seriously, I mean this this may not be a bad idea. Try to sack a pawn for the initiative. B6 is like more weaknesses. No, I don't understand. You definitely don't take with the bishop. This is going to be this is going to be a strong piece. A succession of white white knights. Um I like when you make like connect four with the knights. But why not take with the knights speaking of knights? This is obviously takes takes. It looks totally okay for black. Should equalize. It just equalizes, I think. Quick peek at the engine? Yeah, more or less. So I was thinking about this. Maybe you could have done something like weird like this. Queen A4. Just trying to get extra control of C6. And kind of playing around with the idea of taking the pawn on, on A A7. There is Rook C4, which gets super weird. But that doesn't work. You just play queen takes a7 for reals. No, this move is interesting. Now what does he do? Queen d7. You could take the pawn on a7. Just like that. Because you're getting out on b6. It's not like a trap. I think the queen a4 might be a really strong move, man. Let's take a look. See what the, the oracle says. But this move, I mean, maybe it's just good. Apparently not. a6. Wow. And now here? I thought it was good, but it's got a problem. He's got takes, takes, and b5. Stupid computer. Finds a refutation to everything. Now we have to sack the queen. Sack the queen! It's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> okay. I'll stop joking around. This is not enough, apparently. So B5, and, and you just lost the pawn. Alright, I don't know what to suggest, though. Seriously. Um, computer just... Yeah, Bishop F4 is probably reasonable. Yeah, at least you equalized. Here, 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 here. Now you have the bishop pair, so he made a mistake taking with the with the bishop on c6 though. This is a huge positional mistake. Because this guy is really, really powerful. Or a girl, if you're a girl, and prefer your pieces to be girls. I have no problem with that. Rook fd1. Yes. Welcome to the diagonal. Mystery bodice bishop h3. I was just speaking of how strong this piece is. You know, it has another diagonal on on bishop c bishop h3. Oh no. He still got rook d8. Oh no, he panicked. What's happening after rook to d8? I don't see it. I don't even know who's better here. Poor, poor guy. He just believed you. Decided. Oh, he is getting two pieces for the rook here. What am I talking about? Okay. <laughs> he's right. No, he's right. Oh, my God. He's right. All right. So he should be at least okay here with two, two knights for a rook. You bought us. What did you do? Brought the king into play. Brought the rook into play. Oh no. You bamboozled him with the tactical trick. Bang. Winning your piece back with interest. Another perfect game. Then it's just a matter of technique. Nice, nice. Don't believe the hype. Man, you cut a little close there. I would just be up to c4. I think you're cutting it too close with f4. Although he's got king takes g5, f5, f4. How fast is his play here? 
actually. I mean, we need a lot of Tempe to queen, actually. I'm getting scared. Is this even winning for white? Oh, no. Maybe you have to come back. You win by coming back. You're up a pawn, after all. Yeah, you just win by coming back. Whew, I was scared for a second there. Yep. But that's it. It's like... You're gonna queen with check now? <laughs> It's funny. You buy this is looking at studies. You can add this to the studies. This is perfect for your studies. Game over. All right, guys. Quickly, let's go into the next game. Merle Dixon, Master of Zombies. Guys, tomorrow Friday, Fast Friday, it'll be uh, twelve noon, five plus three. Open challenges to everyone, not just subscribers. I want to thank everyone for subscribing to the stream. Inbox. All right. Let me just go back to this tab here. I can just click up here. What is it? Percy, Soltigo, Merle Dixon. At first glance, it may seem that I played well, but I know better. Don't try to spare my feelings. Okay, this is Merle Dixon versus me. Oh, this is the game he lost? No. It was like, look at the Senna Pawn loss. This was 30-30 casual? Oh my god. So we played a perfect game according to Stockfish. But I had 9 Senna Pawn loss and Merle Dixon had 10. I did not notice this. Yeah, I mean, I noticed this actually a little while ago. Um, not just for this game, but for some recent London system analysis. That my move here is very rare, playing b6. But for me, it's it's not clear. Like, why is b6 bad? I mean, why does no one play b6? It seems like an extremely logical move. The vast majority of players playing d5. I mean, obviously d5 is d5, but... You know, we if we wanted to play d5, we could have played d5 on the first move. So why why would we play d5 now when we could play a hypermodern type of setup? You know, b6 makes complete sense to me. I don't understand why more people don't do this. So I don't I don't even get it. You know, like why why what's wrong with b6? There was a Kosich game where Dragon, like my friend, I remember he did, and maybe Merle Dixon and I had another game a while back. But I thought it was like knight c4 at some point was critical. We may transpose to that position here. I thought he's supposed to threaten to play knight c4. I guess if he plays knight c4 now, I play d5, and then he has to go to e5. What's up with that? No one's ever tried that. It looks a little early. Oh, there is a game, Blotney. Blotney is like reduced to playing normal openings now. That's ridiculous. <laughs> he started out playing normal openings, then he went crazy, played all kinds of weird openings, lost all of his rating, and now he's back to playing normal openings. Knight c4. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting idea to play knight c4. This is a strange move by Merle. Um, why would you put your bishop on necessarily like a e2? Bishop d3 seems much more normal. Okay, bishop d3 is definitely normal when black's played d5. The tricky situation here is like I haven't declared where my pawn is going to go. I played a6. I'm just kind of not sure what I'm doing. I don't like to exchange too early because then they take with a c pawn and it's like insipidly drawn. And I even had the plan of playing a hedgehog, but like C, D, E, D, D6, Knight, B8, Knight back to D7, maybe like a tempo down. See, this move is, this move I don't like, like Knight E5. I had a game just like this that I mentioned during the stream that a guy played against me in Blitz. But it doesn't seem logical to me. Um, 
Again, I don't like your bishop on e2. You know, I, th I think that's the problem here. The bishop should be on d3. And then you'd be ready to play e4. This move is nothing. It's just like, just trading pieces. You know, now it's just totally equal. You literally did the same thing the guy in the blitz game did, which was bishop f3. In, in my blitz game, I played queen d7 in a similar position. But I don't know. I felt like, you know, that move is okay too. But maybe white will play e4. So I thought it's against a strong player, it's safer to play this. You know, and then here, like, you should probably take with the queen, I thought. That seems more logical. To enhance your control of the diagonal in, in e4. No, once you did that, you have nothing. And once you do this, exchanging your strong pawn off on, on you know, now black's, according to the engine, like, 0.1 better. The computer wants me to take with the d-pawn or something? This this is boring. No, this is correct. Take toward the center. And now black's just a tiny bit better. A lesser man I would have beaten in this endgame. I was really short of time. I was down to 15 minutes, I guess, for the simul. So I started to, when I start to get down to 15, 10 minutes, I start to freak out a little bit. Black has a lot of options with a slight advantage here. No, so we're just a little bit better, better king position, um, a kind of dynamic pawn structure. But this is just a draw. There's really nothing to do. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe he makes a mistake trading rooks here. Now I'm a little bit better again. And I was seriously intent on playing for a win in this position, but my time started to get really low. I was down to five minutes now. So, black is better. I'm, I'm practically like Magnus Carlsen chickening out here. I should play a4 at some point, but it creates a pass pawn for him, you know. I think I would definitely play for a win if I had more time against anybody, you know, except for Magnus. All right, next game, um, Soltigo, and then Percy after that. Thanks, Merle. Um, but I think, you you know, you can play that opening better. Bishop d3, obviously, and not, you know, trading pieces through with knight e5. Soltigo, these games are more for show and tell. So I'm sure you can clean up my openings to find out the helpful tips. Here are your choices. Bogo Indian, is a bitch. Nice winning combination. Evans Gambit. All right, let's do the Nimzo. It's more my style. Let's check it out. I don't know the Evans Gambit too much. I'm going to do this. Bogo Indian. Soltigo is black against Valerie Chekhov. Keen is a favorite author of yours. Raymond the Penguin Keen. Enemy of Nigel Short and all that's good in the world. Bishop e4 check. Bishop d2. Queen e7. Alright, so knight c3. This is what I play too. This is my game with Fabiano Caruana. I just 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 came back, came up with it now. I guess Fabiano actually, like ten years ago we played. Um I think it's slightly more accurate. I, I lied. Like, it's slightly more accurate to play g3 first, then, like, black castles, and then you play, like, knight c3 or something like that. I'm not sure. I thought you're supposed to play it a move later for some reason. But this is my game with Fabiano. Castles. We had a game, and, and I was better through most of the game, and then he, like, equalized. And we were both in time pressure, getting close to the later stages and and I made this horrible blunder in our mutual time pressure and he didn't see it I remember sitting there like watching in horror as I was like lost for one move you know and then like in his time pressure he <laughs> he didn't see it so it was a draw anyway but I was better in the opening now a3 um this is not the right idea white's supposed to play g3 and develop and also it looks like queen c2 is a, an interesting move 
I'll have to check that out. Queen C2. Has a very good score if you look at the opening. Explorer. Very, very high winning percentage with Queen C2. 64 games is kind of a relevant sample size. This is a lame move. Jinji played it against Larson and beat him. Wow. I mean, A3 is like almost disrespectful. It's like, here, have a tempo. <laughs> I forced you to do what you were going to do anyway. Um, wow. So, Roman in his prime just played A3 and beat beat the great Larson. Probably like an important tournament, too. I don't know if that would, where that was. That's interesting. I wonder where that was. I'll have to look that up. Jinji against Larson from 1980. Roman was basically, basically at his peak in 1980. And I mean, and Larson was still around his peak too. Maybe he slightly declined. Bishop takes c3. Bishop takes c3. Now d5. This is this is just totally losing. You always do knight e4 and then continue the simplification for these kind of lines. See this? Like Robert Hess lost to a 2200 player. Um. But a really solid player rough Apple with a draw. This is just very safe for black. Soltigo. Yeah, but I don't like D5. I mean, even if it didn't lose the exchange with Bishop B4. My problem with D5 is, is strategic in nature. Like, you just playing a position where your dark square bishop you just traded off. And then you're putting your pawns on white squares. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There are exceptions, you know, where this is actually good. You know, so to me, it's not just about like losing the exchange he overlooked bishop b4. What bothers me is that he's playing a structure that's not really favorable, you know, for his pieces. So he's supposed to play like d6, you know, and go for a, a blockade strategy. Here's a Hassan game. Um, so d5, he misses bishop b4. And now white has another chance for bishop b4. Black has c5, but I still... Yeah, I guess you're out of the woods now. Well, then maybe a CD. You're kind of out of the woods here because you have tricky moves like A5 now. It looks like black's okay. Soltigo would have no trouble finding this move. Um... Let me see. What was that? A Bobby Fischer picture? Um, Queen C2, C5. I had a good Bobby Fischer picture somewhere. Let me see. Well, let me see if I can find it. Speaking of Bobby Fischer. If I can find my Bobby Fischer picture, I'll share it with you guys. Hold on a second here. My internet is kind of, kind of lagging. Um, man, I've got terrible lag. No, I don't know. All right, it's too too laggy. I'll try to share it another time. So, anyways, um, we've got c5, c takes d5, e takes d5, and and Soltigo got out of the, he got out of the, he got out of the main trouble. I mean, now he's he's just facing the bishop pair, and maybe his pawn is going to be this Isolani here. So bishop e2, bishop f5, looking for tactics. Threatening knight g3. Very deep. White saw it. He played queen b3. c4 with tempo. Now queen b5. I would play queen b4, I guess, here. Although now black's queenside with c4 gives him that queenside majority. That's kind of... Um... Later, Turkey Farm. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I would play queen b4. He played queen b5. That's that's not really a normal looking square for the queen. 
and suddenly the way queen is running out of squares it's got a4 only place to go he doesn't want to trade pieces now this is actually turned into a bad bishop so I don't blame you for not taking it Now, b5 is very tempting, because if you play b5 here, and he takes it, you have a4. Is he just, like, trapped? Like a rat? Do you have this move? Mr. Subtle Tigo? Yeah. b5 is really sweet, dude. You just roll. Roll in on the queen side with the queen side. <laughs> like Snoop Dogg here with the pawns. That looks smooth. This is brutal, because if he takes, right? I thought we would play a4. Here he can sack a piece for a couple pawns, but all right. That was my idea. Apparently there's a better way to trap his queen, or just take a lot of stuff. Anyway, b5 was really strong. Soltigo. All right, let's turn off the engine. b5 was considered. It would be. You're good with the forcing tactics. Wow. Huh, beautiful move though. Rook d6 was an underestimated move. This was a Bronsteinian decision. Noticing the, the coordination of the pieces, the way Soltigo appreciates the coordination of the pieces here. Very good. Nice job. The computer points out his bishop e1 could luckily hold that knight. And now he just sacks in exchange for no reason. Not like no reason, but... And Soltigo refuses it. Darn, so it's just... Look at these pieces. One, two, three, four, five. So all pieces kind of focused on the target and, and attacking on, on the white king. Whereas the, the white pieces are not playing. The rook on a1 is totally not playing. The queen is out on a4. And the bishop on e1 is, is strictly a defensive piece. Just absolutely uh, display in, in a total disharmony in the white pieces and the harmony in the black position. Knight g5. Focal point h3. I would have freaked out and probably played f4 or something here. He played this. Wow, just walked into knight d4. Yeah, that's what happens. You become punch drunk after a while. Ooh. Pretty, pretty. And the fork is just... It's coming. <laughs> queen h3 is coming, actually. We might not need that. Black to play queen h3. Is that that's inaccurate, isn't it? How many how many moves does it take? Maybe it's all the same. One, two, three. You could do like one, two, three. Yeah, it would take more moves. That's not inaccurate. That's the fastest mate. Good job. Wow, nice game, Soltigo. Opening was interesting. Not really recommended, you know, to, to play D five and drop the exchange. Carlson complete could complete a Lego, a complete Lego set, one of the expensive kind, in his head when he was five. Mill Skinner, is this some sort of joke or something? He was actually kind of a late bloomer for a child prodigy. I mean, he wasn't like a five-year-old master or something at all. So, I don't know if, if Mule Skinner is making this stuff up. I have no idea. It's hard to see if people are joking around. Is that comment serious? About five-year-old Magnus doing Legos? Alright, that's kind of weird. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and subscribing. Percy is up next. Entertaining, beautiful game by Soltigo. Good to have Soltigo back with us. I hope he's going to be here on, on a regular basis more often. 
Um, he really adds a, a creative element to the stream. And he is our, one of our moderators, so cheers to him. Um, all right, so we've got a little bit of time left. We've got like 30, 25 minutes, so we've got to get through the last couple of games. Percy, we got Fish Rat Cow. Oh, okay. Perth Percy, Perthy. I always do that. All right. You were black against the what? Against the 1750 Fide. So, Scandinavian? No. Knight c3, Van Geet, d5, e4, e6. Now it's like transposing to a French. Knight f3. Rubinstein French. We had one of these against Percy, actually. Why is it so hard for me to say Percy? Okay, bishop d3, c5. That looks like a good move. Yeah, this is just weird. Bishop b3, kind of a strange looking move. It has a good following. Played by Short and and uh, not and Alexei. Doesn't create any pawn weaknesses. <laughs> All right, C takes D four, Bishop takes D four, Knight trades. So you got Knight C five here. That looks like it should equalize. See, instead of playing Knight C five, you play Knight F six. But what doesn't this move like force him to give up his Bishop pair? I mean, you do have, like, no development after something like Queen E2. <laughs> I mean, I realize, like, this is not maybe the easiest thing in the world, but this type of position, I, I feel like black should be okay. Even if you played F6, I mean, he doesn't have the white squared bishop. You've got this monster piece. How bad would this be? Now, I'm curious... We're going to turn on the engine just for a moment and see what it says. You know, maybe CD4 is, is not the best, but I'm very curious about this position if black should play knight to C5. Wow. Wow, it's giving white a huge edge. Bishop takes C5 going into the end game with a huge edge. Wow. Knight C5, bishop takes C5. Queen d1, rook d1, bishop takes c5 with a huge edge for white. I mean, really? Wow. I wouldn't think that white's advantage would be like 0.8 or whatever it was saying. Like something small, sure. I think that Chuck Norris was in Hungary visiting the government there or something. <laughs> Very strange stuff. A staunch Republican. Obviously a genius. Okay, bishop e3, c takes d4. So it doesn't solve all your problems, knight, knight c5. You played knight f6 instead. This ain't a bad move. So he goes back now. And actually there's some games. Alexander Bortnik. Anastasian. Oh, it's always hard to get the queen side out. It's it's the French Rubinstein. I mean, what are you going to do? This looks like a kind of standard position, but h6. I mean, we had a very similar game with Percy where he played something like bishop d7, knight e5, rook d8, but then he's going to hit you with bishop b5. I'm afraid h6 just doesn't do much good. Now what happened here? Okay, so this is just a, an analysis line. This is the main line. He must have played this. So you castled into it. Whoa. I 
I mean, yeah, white needs a way to pry open the black position. I mean, maybe like some sort of crazy kamikaze, no, g4. He's got to play knight e5, I guess. Okay. So he did the sellout. Wow. He gives up and he gets the h7, but that's not a mate. You walk away into the center. Is that what happened? What about like bishop b7? Are you going to get mated or something? Check. King here. What's the truth of this position? There's some sort of knight h4 or something? Knight d4? This is this is looking kind of creepy for black. I don't like the look of this. Okay, so the point is you can trap his king, his queen or something like Sicilian style. Queen takes a8, bishop b7, rook a8. Okay. So maybe we can trap the queen. He doesn't take it. It's a Sicilian theme here. This type of thing. You know, may not be that bad. The queen for the two rooks. It's it's a kind of weird, though. Yeah. I mean, maybe h6, I understand. It felt like you released the tension too early, if you want to know my honest opinion in the beginning, with, like, c takes d. Probably there's a more accurate move there. Yeah, this is not that easy. So he went here, he sort of chickened out, and then king g7. And yeah, this is a typical Rubinstein thing. The double daft pawns, it's actually hard to get the black king. You might even be able to play bishop f8. I was just thinking, I know there's this, but... You know, maybe you can play bishop f8 and bishop g7 and just defend. And it's okay. I don't see anything for white. I mean, obviously g4 could happen. But even there, let's just peek at the engine. Yeah, it's okay for black. You could actually play bishop f8. It might be safer than king g7. Yeah, now you're just walking into some sort of sacrifice, maybe. I would think bishop f6. Now he has bad threats, though. Rook e3 is becoming an issue. This this rook. Oh, yeah. That's it. It's like lights out. You just can't play bishop b7. So if you went here, he's got some scary threats with rook e3. If we go back a move, instead of stepping your king up, yeah, maybe this. And bishop g7. This is the best try. So it looks like you're lost after this here. I mean, he's threatening queen h6. You don't have a sort of counter sack, do you? Rook takes d4. I mean, I'm kind of scared. We have this like sick move. <laughs> Are we like winning now after rook h4? Oh no, it's, oh my god, that's insane, dude. What a position. Can you save this position? Rook g6 check here and bishop b6. Oh my god. Rook h4. That's awesome. Wow, just when you thought it was safe to get out of the water. But I'm being stupid. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's mate. It's mate. Alright, never mind, never mind, never mind. Alright, he has to go here. That's not a variation. He just takes here and then takes here. And he's just like better. Sorry, I got excited. His rook was hanging. I, I was just thinking about for th things for white. So rook takes d4, queen h6, king g8, rook e7. Yeah, he doesn't hang mate on the back rank. 
trying for a spectacular combination. But I mean, clearly, like, after rookie six, you're lost. Nice, nice. Which way do we go now? Just take on f5. And now you're just, like, practically winning. Those two bishops are very, very strong. Why can't you take on f4 with the queen? Can't you take on f4 with the queen here? You're just winning after queen f4. I mean, okay, it's not like winning, winning, but you're clearly better. You play bishop a6. That was a major mistake. Well, what's happening here? Now you're winning again. I guess it was time pressure. He has like queen c5 check and bishop g6. And then you get mated. But you've got to be winning now. I mean, queen g6. You should still be winning. Okay, it's not easy. He's got a bunch of pawns. Queen e4. So the actual game was queen e5. With the mate threat. h4. And it's getting kind of messy. Black is at no risk of losing. So you agreed to a draw here. Mutual time pressure. But you were on the verge of you're on the verge of winning basically. Yeah, but the opening was, was a disaster. I think even just exchanging on d4 might have been tempting, but as almost always it seems like releasing the tension is, is a mistake. I think that the Rubicai French is super hard to play. You have to be extremely well versed in that. Mr. Coffee. Is Mr. Coffee with a C plays that too? Um, Infinite Flash Chess and Mule Skinner are the last. We had also the study. Okay, quick study. Fish Rack Cow. Alright, so here's. He found the training puzzle. Okay. This is this is a training puzzle for white to play and win. This this perplexed him. He said. All right. So my first question is like black threatening anything. What I'm trying to understand, you know. It doesn't seem like black is threatening anything. So we're at we're at peace with the world here. But I mean there are ways we can get mated. Like we play knight f four and rook g one is mate. Um I don't normally do puzzles. Percy Hepworth, you're welcome. Thanks for the donation. One hundred bits from Percy, one hundred and three to be exact. One hundred and three making him 5th place in the list for the week. Alright, so this is from Fish Rat Cal. I'm not seeing it. You know, I'm not seeing it. This is not an easy puzzle. You're rated 2,000. I've seen this guy somewhere before, Roof Seer. Either I played him, I played him. That's funny. Maybe he played on the stream. Right, so I'm not seeing it. You know, I'm just not seeing any obvious ideas. H7 is like begging for a mate, you know. But what are you gonna do? Wait to play here, um, man. So black isn't really threatening anything. But what the heck can white threaten? You know. And that's the really strange thing about this puzzle. Oh, I guess. I wanted to say, all right. If Black's not really threatening anything, we have to find the weak point. Maybe H seven, but I 
I mean, what's the deal? Like, queen f5? He's just simply defending it. A queen f5 will double attack f2 and threaten h7. We stay on h3. All right, so that's my guess. It will be queen f5, black to play. You know, we've got threats of rook takes f2 and, and threats on h7. Mule Skinner suggested queen d7. Queen d7, rook, rook on the second to g7. And it doesn't look that simple. So I'm thinking queen f5 with a double threat against f2 and h7. Queen f5, rook g7. You know, and what does he do after, like, rook takes g7, rook takes g7, queen takes f2, rather rook takes f2 there. Queen f5 also protects c4. I mean, this has to be the move. Yeah. And you just play um, winning the f2, but not, not queen takes because you drop everything. So I guess you have to play rook takes f2 now. He just doesn't have anything. So that's it. It was just kind of a subtle thing. It wasn't a big deal. No brilliant moves. Um, all right, we got it right. Guys, like last two games, um, Infinite Flash Chess and Mule Skinner. Let's go. We've got 10 minutes left. Infinite Flash. This is a 7,000 game. I played on Lee Chess. It doesn't fail to disappoint. Gear popcorn ready. Two seven twelve hundreds did not play this game, for entertainment purposes. All right, whoops, let's do it. Khalid Radwan says, "Please use please use arrows to be able to follow you." Khalid, I I usually do use a lot of arrows, but sometimes, you know, maybe with that puzzle there, um, I wasn't. But um. All right. Guys, is this just a weird coincidence or what? That's the guy from the puzzle is, is Infinite Flash's opponent. What is the chance of that? Can somebody... He has played 11,000 Rapid Games. He's like one of the most prolific players on Lee Chess or something. He's got a massive amount of games. What is the chance of the puzzle guy being <laughs> the infinite flash uh, opponent from 21 hours ago? That's really weird, man. Dee 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 dee. It's like the Twilight Zone or something. Doo doo. I can't do the Twilight Zone. Can somebody do Twilight Zone? I love that show. E4, E5, F4. Conspiracy theory. King's Gambit. Infinite Flash is black against the puzzle guy. That's really weird. What are the chances of that, you know? Knight F3, very rare move. Knight takes E5. Knight H6. This is not a move that influences the center. This move is for entertain entertainment purposes only. No fear, you'll find here. So obviously queen h5 check is beckoning. I, I'm I'm expecting queen h5 check. He does it. This is obviously like a prepared variation by infinite flash. Just trying to tempt people into making unsound sacrifices. Oh no. You know, so the real truth is, like, what would have happened if you had just taken, like, this is just scary, I know, but I guess you go here, and just like, there's no, look, Ma, there's no checks, <laughs> there's no checks, and if you're really scared, when he takes his pawn, you could trade queens with, like, queen e8, you know, so... Yeah, he has three pawns for a piece. It's a mess. I don't know what's going on. 
It's like the Cochrane Gambit. Um, but it doesn't appear he has anything after this. Like, seriously. You look at King E7, you figure, oh, sh shit, he's, he's like winning this pawn with check. But I think the secret is to see that you can go here when you, you know, you, you first see this position. Just instinctively play King D7. Like you're a lifetime Latvian Gambit player. Anyway, so you just wung it, wung it with Bishop G4. And he's got this check over here. Then C6, then he eats your Rook. Okay, now he's not threatening any mates or anything. Your h6 knight protects everything, so give him the rook, right? Have the rook. Absolutely. I mean, that's like a Latvian type of thing. You know, you could sacrifice stuff like this. Um, queen b6, that's kind of a weird move. Yeah, I would think, like, getting the bishop out or... But it makes sense to defend them. I mean, I guess bishop d6. You wanted to keep his queen prisoner, basically, with queen b6. He wanted to keep the queen a prisoner on a8 and not not allow it to come out. Of course, you can do the same thing with queen c7 as well. While hitting f4, maybe. Then he could play bishop a6, though. I'm not sure if infinite flash chess was thinking this. But then again, he could play bishop a6 anyway. That's kind of a funny move here. Queen b6, bishop a6. <laughs> Freeing his queen. I want to see what the engine says about bishop a6. Too slow. Alright. Bishop a6 is too slow. No, I don't think it's that easy for white, though. Not in a practical game. This is great for a Latvian blitz game. You're giving him e4 with no fear. With tempo, in a sense, so he's going to be hitting your bishop now. That's kind of surprising, but you are re-protecting the knight. <laughs> Freeing your queen. This is just for fun. Now he castles. Oh, no, that's illegal. All right, rook f1. Man, he's greedy. He takes this pawn. Now he takes that. And at the end of the day, white has no pieces developed. Just, just the queen is on a8. Black has the queen out, you know, the bishop out, the knight out, the rook is developed from its original square. Trapped queen. Rook f1. Now what? You know, it's tempting to take on h2 or something, but I don't know how we're going to make it work. So he does that. I didn't know which way to take, but rather than lose a bishop. So he walks out with the king. And now queen a7. Saved his queen. Logical. Totally logical. Stopping queen g1. Rook e8 check. Now obviously... King d1, you know, is not a good idea. Because of queen takes queen and knight f2 check. Um, so, there aren't a lot of choices here. Bishop e2 looks like it saves the game. Only move. But in panic mode, white played king f1. And I don't see it either. There's apparently a forced win for black. I guess it's bishop g3. Yeah, this. Threatening mate. Threatening mate. Threatening mate. Beautiful. Threatening mate and mate. Nice job. All right, guys, last game. Very entertaining. Last game from Mule Skinner. Then we got to go. I'll be back tomorrow. I want to thank everybody for joining me here for the subscriber stream. Um, I'm white in this 60 plus 15. Against the Andalusian champ. Andalusian champ under 14. Sounds scary. That's I don't like to play kids between the ages of like 11 and 13. That's like the scariest ones. All right. Andalusia, Linares, Ubeda. So, Mule Skinner is playing the white bits here. Great fun game. Great game, Infinite Flash. Your 7,000th game, that's amazing. 
Your game, your opponent's guy is. He's played so many games, it's ridiculous, though. He has like 20,000 games. That's why he has so many puzzles, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay, so. Yabatis is playing this, and I've been playing it like off and on a little bit here in Blitz. Yule Skinner. Now. One thing that we should note is that against the E6, yeah, I mean, against A6, actually, um, in the closed Sicilian, yeah, this is different. I'm talking about, like, it's an open Sicilian. Sorry. We've been, we've been talking about, you know, playing the O'Kelly and then, and then playing B5, but that's different. I mean, this move is actually recommended by a lot of people, you know, as an alternative to the, the way I play the classical G6. But I think you're, like, not supposed to play F4 against a6 I mean most people say that like f4 is is a mistake here for white um, I'm not sure if we played a game but I guess the experts say you're supposed to revert back to like a standard kind of close Sicilian with g3 or possibly knight f3 Yeah, I mean, this is the way to go if you're going to play it this way. We can still revert back to a kind of close Sicilian with g3. You're obviously, you know, you're obviously not developing your bishop outside the pawn chain. Um, now g6. This is a weird move, I think. You're supposed to play typically like e6. You know that, of course. Neil Skinner's pretty good. He knows the standard setups here. No, so e6 is the standard way to approach this. This is a really experimental move, g6. My first thought is that like c5 might, you know, be a problem. That that's like unprotected in some positions, or insufficiently protected. So I wondered about that. Morozevich against Sasha Kiran from 2008 was g4. Wow. And some good players. So Sasha Kiran, Gaim, and Laszlo Ganda. Well, Ganda was 2200 back in 2000, but. He's now 25.50. Um, but anyway, he was probably good even when he was 22.55. <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, that's surprising. Three good players play G6. Interesting. So G3, short versus Megami. And this is a new move because Gaian played, Gaian played B4, but B4 seems strange. You know, it seems really strange to p commit to that. Now we've got some other games. Wow. We've transposed to a Romero Holmes game from your home residential country, Mule Skinner. I don't know what to recommend. I mean, this just seems to go into a into closed Sicilian where Black's played the Bishop B7 a little early. I've tried to do stuff like this, but usually I run into some sort of problem. As I said, c5 is weak. Maybe you can try to get something going here. f5. I don't know about this. This may be too too ambitious. I mean, you're not you're not really that developed to play f5, I think. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Let's say someone played h4. I, I don't know about that, but I don't think you could go wrong with castles here, you know. Sashikaran has two games. So he's making a habit of this. F5 looks too early. He takes. Okay, you're playing it like in a bishop c4 kind of way, but you don't have a bishop on c4. It's still interesting. I mean, it's it's definitely a sacrifice in the close Sicilian. Sometimes you can play stuff like knight h4. Um, Yeah, I thought maybe you wouldn't take it all, actually, and just, just castle. But it's very coffee house. So, he plays this, he played check, he plays queen e7, goes into the end game. Yeah, this actually looks pretty reasonable for black, I guess. But I guess it's reasonable for both sides. Trading the white square bishops, where to put your king? You need the castle, I agree. Now, 
you might have knight g5. You have different knight moves all over the place, you know. That could be a good exchange of bishops. I think trading your, your blocked bishop for that b7 bishop is good. He plays this. You trade it on a, and I don't know. I don't want to trade here if I don't have to. You know, I think that clarifies in his favor. But maybe if you have a pin or some concrete tactical reason for doing this, then it's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't necessarily. Um, but this is what you tried. You wanted to, to pin him there. But the thing is, he's got, what, king f8? And you've got knight h4. So maybe you're good here. Looks good. You can recapture with the king on g2. This looks kind of nice. I don't know what he's going to do. He's he's in serious danger. So rook e6. Trade bishops and rook e6, basically. His only defense. And now you're just building up. As quickly as possible. I feel like there's something here for white. But knight takes g6. F takes g6. Knight e4, maybe? Can you play knight takes g6, h takes f takes g6, knight d5? I guess the combination just doesn't quite work. Let's see what the engine says. I feel like there might be a combination here. He's so far behind in development. Yeah, I'm looking for this. It's just not clear. Just not clear. It's a mess. All right. So you just developed. There's nothing concrete. Rook f3. Knight c6, here, oh no, I mean that's the best he has, if that's the best he has, <laughs> the best a man can get, okay, well, what other developments can we try, d6, right, could he try this, and then like playing knight d7, deep, huh? Now you've got 94, 95 for real. This is looking really good. He played very fast, which annoyed me. Yeah. Well, it's always annoying when some plays super fast. Kovalenko did that against me. It made me crazy. He played the game like it was a blitz game. Like he was playing a tournament game like it was like a very fast, rapid game. And it really bothered me a lot. Um, yeah, little kids, though, are going to tend to do that. So I'm just curious if he even has a defense here after rook f3. I would think d6. The computer says his move is the best, though. Wow, knight c6 here. I I just don't see what he's supposed to do. I mean, I just see how this is good enough. I don't I don't get it. How is this good enough for black? I mean, he's just down two pieces for a rook. Was there something that I missed? Knight d5. I mean, you do have the option of knight to d5 here. Okay, this is more complicated than I thought because your knight is so badly placed on the side of the board. Um, he's got rook e8 and like rook e2 ideas. So this is this is trickier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, bishop g5. He doesn't have f6 g5. Bishop g5. I guess it's all right. He goes there. This is a bit of a problem, but I think you should be clearly better. Yeah, I mean, this is a terrible move, 93. I mean, it feels like he might have something here. Doesn't, it's already too late, wow. Wow, so there's nothing he could do. I mean, I don't know, it felt like there was almost something, but this is clearly, I mean, I, I would just take, I don't think you should mess around, you know. This looks like a straight up technical win. Two knights versus rook with outpost square like on d5. I think you should just snap this off. I don't understand. Why would you not take? You're playing for mate or something fancy? This is crazy. Not to take his, his knight there. This is just outright crazy. Now it's like a total mess. But I mean, if you just take, you're just winning. I mean, it's two knights versus a rook. There's no way this is okay for black. This is maybe not easy to win, but it's like just straight up two knights versus a rook. 
with, with a position where it looks like your knights can get some squares, particularly d5. I think it's just a very strange oversight. Maybe you just didn't concentrate for a moment. I, I don't know. But allowing this is just unnecessary. Now it's... Yeah, I mean, you're really hurting with a knight on h4 here. I think you need to get your knight back into the game from h4. Fish Rat Cow, thank you for the donation. 500 bits. Big one. Thank you so much. Um, Dim leading the week. Fish Rat Cow, 500. Merle Dixon, 400. Thank you, guys. So let's see what happened. We're, we're just about done for the stream, guys. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Excuse me. Tomorrow, 12 o'clock. We're going to be playing 5 plus 3 Blitz here. 5 plus 3. Fast Friday. Man, he just gave him that pawn. I'm, I'm reversing moves, sorry. Knight takes c2, knight e4, rook c8, bishop f4, and now knight b4. It bothers me that you're leaving your knight on h4 for so long. There you go. You're two moves from mate now. This obviously had to be calculated because he has f5. He doesn't play it. So what's up with f5? Okay. f5. f5, you have knight g5 check. Okay. So here, 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 here. And then again, f5. I'm having a little bit of trouble. Oh man. You just blundered. Totally on un the unforced errors. If this was like a tennis match, we'd be like, you know, the second unforced error from Mule Skinner. Um, fairly obvious tactic. Can only really be explained by like extreme time pressure or something. I mean, I know you're you're better than that. Um, just absolutely unforced errors. And now it's like probably losing. He's got that rook with a pawn. You know, you've only got a pawn for the rook. Now it's over. You just lost. He trades down here. Um, wait a minute. Did he hallucinate? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Maybe the young player made a mistake. So now it's like a race. Uh, we're both queening. He he hallucinated the king and pawn in game. I'm almost thinking like he could play for a win with h6. b2, h7, b1, queen, h8, queen. But that's not. You're never winning. You just take the draw now. Oh, you're winning. What? Oh my god. I thought this was just a draw. <laughs> oh my god. No way. What a miracle. I was like so happy you could just draw. Oh man. That's brutal. And you win. I mean, it was a miracle that you could even draw, but you actually won. I totally missed h6. Wow. I was just like, yeah, you finally made it to a draw. I just saw his king was in the in the in the square of the pawn and man, it just goes to show, you know, how well people can play and and be really really bad in the end game. Um I'm noticing that a lot on Lee Chess with players. Just end game end game levels are very very low. Anyway, guys, I got to go. I'm a little bit late, so we will see you again on Friday. Thanks, everybody, for taking part in the subscriber stream, and I will see you tomorrow at 12 noon with uh, Fast Friday Blitz here. Yeah, super lucky, Mule Skinner. You made some strange, very obvious tactical mistakes in that game. You know, just no need for that. I will see you guys later. Thanks for joining me, and uh, thanks for joining us with the Pandas. See you later. Bye. All right, guys, later. Thanks for um, thanks for Soltigo, by the way, for showing up and uh, also JCS. I will see you guys on Friday. Take care.
Goodbye. Laters.